Hi guys, uh, welcome to another podcast series. It's like seventh or eighth, I don't know, uh, podcast. But yeah, so I have like equal podcast and equal live stream. So today uh, we have Devans Gandhi. Like this is the person I do most of my podcast. I have already do, and this is the third one. But since uh, I've been involved in the crypto for so long, I, I won't talk about crypto now. Uh, and today we are going to talk about uh, Algorand. The, the uh, blockchain algorithm chain. So if you don't know what algorithm is, this is the perfect place. What algorithm does and what this whole thing means, like what does proof of state, proof of work, what does the, these terms mean? Uh, then this is the perfect place. You have come to the right uh, right place. Uh, just sit back, relax, have a coffee or like popcorn, chill back and let's have a one hour of conversation uh, with my friend Devansh Gandhi and let's go. Yeah, so basically Sanchit, uh, just tell me why are we only discussing algorithm? Yeah, like me being a beginner, I have just earlier uh, have, a, you know, a little bit of knowledge regarding Bitcoin, Ethereum and kind of traditional uh, crypto stuff. We, I think, which uh, many of uh, you might be knowing if you are into blockchain kind of stuff. But today, uh, why are we just uh, going towards the algorithm, which I think uh, if uh, you are a new in the crypto stuff, you might not be knowing this term of uh, or you might not be familiar with this uh, kind of uh, cryptocurrency, which is algorithm. So any particular thing? Yeah, so, so like, one, uh, so it's one of like a non-traditional answer, let me put it this way. So I was watching a film uh, on Netflix last week, which was called as Enigma. So what Enigma is, I highly recommend you folks. Like uh, it's one of the best films out there. On it's a documentary of World War Two, in which how uh, uh, Alan Turing, the person named Alan Turing, and his team decoded the like the encryption uh, in the World War Two when the messages were encrypted, sent from like uh, Russia, uh, Germany, and stuff. So he was the person with his team of other members who decoded this. And I, I was like pretty impressed by like uh, it was like just a fascinating movie as a uh, as a person who loved mathematics and like, who is deeply into like the the mathematics, cryptography, and the blockchain space. So I was like very fascinated by this. And then I, I like I was doing some just general research because when I'm fascinated into stuff, I just Google it and I have like six seven tabs, and then I then I found out uh, uh, after like in in honor of his name, there, there's a award which is like turning award, which goes to like one of the best mathematicians of like the decade or like uh, of people out there. And then I was like going to the list, like who are who are the recent folks who have like won this Allen like the turning award of like mathematics. And then I found a person which was called as Michaelia Silvi. And if you guys don't know, uh, I will pick up uh, like a. Uh, which are here and there. So yeah, Sylvia McCallie. So sorry, I pronounced that totally butchered that name. Uh, I really apologize. So I, I found him like he was a person. And why like I'm specifically talking about Silvio? Just understand. Just understand. Like I'm I'm working in the blockchain in the crypto space. And Sylvia is one of the founders of chain known as Algorand. So you might have heard of like Bitcoin and Ethereum. These are all blockchains. These are all blockchain. And one of there are various blockchain out there and one of the specific blockchain out there is called as Algorand. And Sylvia is the person who founded Algorand in 2018. And he is one of the greatest, I can say greatest minds out there in this decade. He is a Nobel Prize winner. He's a, he's a professor at MIT. Like if something disruptive or like if great things would need to be made, this is the perfect person. Like according to Indians, he's the perfect person who can build this stuff. Like he has all the credentials. Like he is working at, he's a professor at MIT. He's a Nobel Prize winner. He is just so good at mathematics. So like from Alan Dunning, from like, see the irony from Netflix to blockchain. Like how, how I just like switch the pages. That's what like, if you're totally keen into this stuff, that's, that's what it does to you. You are, if you are totally go down the rabbit hole and that's why, because Sylvia is a turning award winner and uh, he's a founder, one of the founders of Algorand. So I just like thought, like, let's, let's talk about Algorand, like what Algorand is, because I feel like in India, especially like in India, there are people just know about Bitcoin, just a small fraction even know about Bitcoin and Algorand is like far behind. So I thought like with our platform, uh, I've been talking about crypto for like a long time. For, 
Yeah, that's the main thing I would say because uh, I think day before yesterday we were just having a conversation regarding Algorand and just you told me the about the founder and I was like quite uh, eager and desperate to know about this great personality because the first thing that you told me is that he's a great mathematician and I was like I have to read about him a lot. Then yesterday I was just scrolling through his profile and uh, first of all. uh i think there are loads of stuff uh, which are included in its portfolio besides being a, a great italian uh, computer scientist mathematician and a professor at the massachusetts institute of technology and you know he is one of the leading minds in the field of cryptography or uh, game theory and what not i would say and more importantly he is the founder of algorand and in 2017 as i read uh i'm not sure i think it's 2017 he founded algorand along with his some crazy team A- absolutely absolutely so yeah so that's why i thought like let's have a conversation a deep dive of what algorand is just just explain this to a crypto new people sir like if you are new to crypto i just just i said before in the introduction sit back relax and have fun we going to It's kind of a, like a documentary phase. It's like a documentary phase. We are explaining things algorithm to the best of our possibility. Uh, I can say like I'm not the smartest person out there. I don't fact check me on many of the things. I might be like saying things in my own language, but this will get you a sense of like what things are, how they works in this environment. So yeah, that's one of the reasons. Like I, I thought like let's have a chat with like because you are a new person who has entered into crypto. I've been working in the crypto space for almost like one and a half years now. So I know the nitty gritty details of stuff. So I thought, like, let's have a conversation. Like, what questions a new person in the crypto poses about a chain, a new chain as algorithm? So yeah, that's why I thought like we should have a talk about algorithm. I think for the audience who are watching this podcast, I think the very first thing, if you are new by in this uh, blockchain related stuff, what come to your mind is that what is a blockchain? Yeah, I am just hearing it lots of uh, in my surroundings and all. What is blockchain? so i think before moving to the cryptocurrency kind of stuff let me just explain the concept which is involved behind this thing so uh, as the name specifies firstly that blockchain is uh, basically a chain of blocks as the name itself specifies so you know we have earlier uh, you know we know different kinds of ways of uh, storing database and also it is an entirely new thing uh, which was you know came familiar when bitcoin was launched in 2010 uh, somewhere around that but nowadays there are many uh, many kind of cryptocurrency stuff and many kind of technologies that are based on uh, this blockchain technology so yeah as i was explaining so blockchain basically consists of a chain of blocks which is basically used to store the data and you can also at a high level uh, and a large level it can also be referred as a database and for a very initial level the basic unit is a block which basically consists of three elements so firstly as i read it consists of a data obviously that we store into that block and the second thing is a hash which is a unique address unique address of a uh, you know a decided number of digits and the second thing is a previous hash so as i uh, explained that it consists of a chain of uh, blocks so a block consists of a, a hash address of itself as well as the hash address of its previous block so now when we'll be talking about the security thing and like uh, you might have also heard that it's next to impossible to hack a blockchain or a crypto kind of stuff so we'll be explaining soon that why it is you know not explaining we'll be discussing soon that why it is you know impossible to just hack it off and just make modifications as per uh, what we want to do and without uh being known to any of the systems involved in that blockchain and now just coming to the point of bitcoin so in 2010 this was the first cryptocurrency that was built using this technology and today like we are talking about algorand which is uh, you know many more advanced thing and as we were talking about uh, this uh, silvio mecali so one of the Uh, you know great things and incredible kind of thing a statement that uh, he recently made was that uh, basically he challenged the blockchain trilemma concept which uh, which earlier claims that uh, you will be having only two out of these three 
just just a disclaimer just a disclaimer so guys we are going to discuss about that if you feel like there are certain words which were like just words which you ca- cannot understand just hold back we are going to discuss this is just for an overview like we are going to talk about like blockchain dilemma and stuff and if any of the word does not make sense to you just sit back and relax yeah 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 so yeah as i was talking that this uh, the founder uh, the first statement he claimed the first statement he made after launching and and recent uh, recent times regarding algorand was that a uh, algorand will be overcoming the problem of this uh, that recently uh, it is claimed that the blockchain trilemma that you will be having only two out of these uh, three uh things which are uh, involved in the blockchain trilemma and more about it we'll talk later when just sanchit will also uh wants to discuss regarding blockchain trilemma yeah I, I, absolutely so like uh, the, like the way that you explain blockchain is like for a crypto new i think it's enough but to understand in like a much much greater sense is like uh, uh bitcoin was the first it was like the first version of blockchain. yeah i just explain in a layman in a layman's way so that uh, even a student of you know high school can understand this terminology my main motto was that yeah blockchain just provide the infrastructure so uh let's compare apple to apple let's compare like there is an app so many of you guys have known apple app store so apple app store is like a platform and on top of that there are many apps built on that right so apple app store provides you the infrastructure it helps you reach us to all of the folks out there who have apple devices so they have the network effect they provide you the infrastructure to scale and on top of that an app will be built let's suppose x app will be built so these are like to to understand like what blockchain is so blockchain is kind of the apple app store just to compare apple to apple so it provides you the infrastructure how to build on top of that it provides you the network effect if you have built on top of a blockchain it give access you to all of the users of those blockchain and on top of that just as compared like an app build on app store apple app store is just called an app right but an app built on a blockchain is called as dapp d a p p s it's like decentralized app because blockchain is fully decentralized things so uh, that's why an application built on top of a blockchain is dapps and specifically in terms of algorand any of the financial services any of like nft platforms related anything built on top of algorand chain is called as future fi so future fi is just a term that they refer to so we know like they they why they thought future fi is the term because in next 10 15 years everything that you see right now is properly going to be built on decentralized is properly going to be decentralized there will be no centralized party that's what i feel i might be biased so just a disclaimer out there i might be biased i own a lot of lot of cryptocurrency so I, i have biases in my thesis so yeah so i feel like in next 10 maybe next couple of decades all of the things that we use instead of having a centralized power instead of having like apple having all of the resources of like having power to all of the apps built on top of that everything will be distributed everything and as a content creator you have feel like there is censorship even on youtube there is censorship you have to like do certain kind of things in a certain way because it's censorship you don't want to like get removed of the platform right it, similarly on twitter while blockchain provides you an opportunity to be uncensored or like censorship resistant no one can like remove your content or if it's on the blockchain while if it's on a youtube platform it can be removed within a second but that's what like benefits of a blockchain are it helps you properly decentralize it's a properly decentralized things let's put it that way and it helps you have the uncensorship like the censorship resistant which all of the like the conglomerates big tech companies have they have the power on top of you while blockchain does not while blockchain provides you an access to that it it helps you remove to the system that we are used to to begin or to enter a life into a new system so we are going to talk about the next the next topics we are going to talk about what are the things like specifically about algorand that separates it from all of the other blockchains what are the problems that algorand is trying to solve because everything is a problem statement now like even uh everything like even uh, you, you have clipped in the video because you are trying to figure out what is algorand so what is algorand is a problem statement for you and we are here to like 
give you as much information as you can. So everything is a problem statement and algorithm blockchain itself is a problem statement. Like what does, there are certain things in a blockchain that cannot be attained or that's like no chain has attained. There are certain features which like no chain can attain and that's what like blockchain trial ever comes into the place. So I think uh, they once you have read about it, maybe you want to go ahead like explain what blockchain trial is. Yeah, recently, yeah, recently only I have just read uh, gone through a 76 pages long document which explained blockchain trilemma and like after that as I uh, discussed earlier that uh, then came the point of cell view so I'll relate that later. So basically I'll just uh, discuss sequence wise. So as you firstly, uh, as you told that decentralization, yeah, it's completely the need of the time, yeah because we all of us uh, just want each and everything uh, basically public. We want that what are the informations being stored and what are the things we invest in. And like, let us take examples of the traditional banking system, which is like centralized. And in India, uh, so basically we can see that there is a central uh, power, which is also known as RPI, uh, Reserve Bank of India, which just governs through all these kind of stuff, banking transactions, what are the things made, modifications in the currency kind of system and each and everything. So we are not as much aware about the things or the about the transparency basically. The, this is the key word I would say that the, we are not aware about the transparency that is being there inside this whole system. And when we uh, talk about this decentralized way of currency and loads of stuff can be just related to this decentralized thing. It is like completely each and every person can have a track of the things which are related to his or her portfolio. And even any any person uh, throughout the globe, he can have a check that what are the things and like, like uh, such kind of stuff. So now just coming to the point of blockchain trilemma. So as I said earlier that the word itself specifies that there are tri so three terms are consisting of this that uh, first is basically security, which is uh, I think the key element in any kind of uh, stuff, particularly we are talking about cryptocurrency because we know we want now that we are investing such a huge kind of a uh, huge or uh, huge money and other stuff. So we want what are the security levels that will be provided to us. So when I was explaining through a uh, blockchain, I, I just told a thing that it is next to impossible to hack a blockchain. So same things, uh, same thing comes here also where we can just say that it is just next to impossible because we want the consent of more than 50%, 50 that is 51% of the total systems that are involved in a, uh, this chain. So we want their consent to provide any kind of modifications to provide any kind of things and also it is just that makes it next to impossible to just make any modifications, any changes without the consent, without other people know that it is, uh, it will going to be beneficial, this change will going to be beneficial, we cannot make anything. Then comes the point of scalability, which is the second thing uh, that comes in this blockchain trilemma and basically in a layman terms or I would say in basic definition to so scalability in a blockchain is basically the ability of a platform to support increasing number or load of transactions basically and when we talk about this traditional cryptocurrency that is Bitcoin I would say this is the point where Bitcoin lacks and I think Sanchit you want to add something to this thing like the load of transaction and but I think you are having some stats as well absolutely so uh, just to just to give you a folks an example like the credit card network like the credit cards that most of the car folks use out there these are mastercard they do a transaction uh, of the magnitude of 60000 transaction per second so they do transaction of the magnitude of 60000 per second they can handle that while bitcoin can only handle transaction 300000 transaction per day in 24 hours so if you can divide it you can get like a uh, Six transactions per hour, ten trans one transaction per ten minutes. So it's very, 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 very less scalable as compared to like the needs of to to meet the needs of all of the folks out there. So 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 what like blockchain trilemma? Like just to explain this, there are three features in every block. Like there are three core fundamentals of a blockchain. So you can say like the the core fundamentals are security, 
decentralization and scalability and there is like a blockchain trilemma like the blockchain can only attain two of those things because it's always a trade off you can have decentralization scalability scalability or security or so you can only have two of those things so bitcoin has only decentralization security is one of the most secure network out there it has never been hacked in its whole lifetime so and it's decentralized so it's like bit i can run a bit bitcoin node you can run a bitcoin node so decentralized means bringing more nodes into the to run the network so as i explained like visa does a transaction of like 600000 transaction per second bitcoin does 10 10 one transaction per 10 minutes and to explain what algorand does like algorand provides you an opportunity or like algorand claims algorand claims uh remember guys algorand is a new chain algorand is still is pretty young stage it will like 3 4 Three four years. If we start from the white paper when it was released in twenty seventeen, so it just has been four years. The, this project has been like built on. People are working on it, and so Algorand claims that uh, they have all of these three features. So they claim that they have done a perfect trade, like mechanism of trade, like small this, small this, small this, so that they have all of those things. Like they have decentralization of an appropriate level. They have scalability of an appropriate level. They have security of an appropriate level. So that's what like the blockchain trilemma says. Like you can only have two until until algorithm says no. We cannot have all three. But to have all three, this the algorithm chain comes up. So like this is the kind of say that's why that's why I said it's like the third version of a blockchain because like the uh, the first version of the blockchain was Bitcoin. The second version was Ethereum, and the third version. It's much more technological advanced. It's much more like ecosystem advanced, much more easier to like build on top of that. Because remember, blockchain just isn't provides you an infrastructure. It's very hard to build on top of Bitcoin. It's very hard, very hard. But algorithm provides you an infrastructure to build you on top of an algorithm. So an algorithm blockchain to build your apps or build your what I call what everyone calls a dApps on top of algorithm. So yeah, so that's what I, I think I covered what, what you were like uh, asking me. Uh, I think I'm right. Yeah. 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 More than yeah. It's more than enough. I think because you have discussed the scalability part completely, and more than that, uh, you have also discussed why like like just uh, Silvio is claiming that. Uh, on you know he has challenged the blockchain trilemma which earlier claims that you will be having only two out of these three things basically uh if you guys don't know i'll just explain that it can trilemma consists of a triangle which uh, which is having these three kind of things in its three edges and so to balance out uh as we can see that there is something which lags behind if we consider the case of whether bit uh, bitcoin or ethereum but in this case just silvio mccalli the founder is claiming that uh he'll be uh not even lagging behind this scalability part even making it the best the way possible yeah so and the third thing if i talk about this trilemma is decentralization and i think sanchit i have explained it more than enough earlier when i talked about this banking system in india oh absolutely man absolutely now let's uh move, move on to like the, the next thing like in in like uh i i don't know like uh I, I don't know many of the folks out there like uh what's the best way to get new con to net get new users out there best ways to do paid marketing right to run ads and to like do this stuff right on google facebook or instagram whatever it is right this is like the 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 way that new companies get to it right but what like i don't know if you guys have know until 2021 like until june 2021 no platform allowed any crypto ads to run on their platform so it was very hard to like get new users it was so that's why like community is very important like the team behind those and the, all of the folks behind the project is very important and when i see the and when i see that like the team the community behind like algorithm it's just awesome like you cannot ask i think you cannot ask more than like these are one of the most brilliant minds working on a project together like you cannot ask more than that these are one of the top minds like top brilliant one from all across the world 
to work on a project that's it's trying to solve a problem statement as i said blockchain trial mark itself is a problem statement they are trying to solve one of the biggest hardest problem in the whole blockchain space to solve the blockchain trial mark so i think we should give a like a, a big shout out a big like credits to all of the team out there uh, to the just not only founders yeah absolutely absolutely yeah yeah I, i was just saying like just not only the founders because uh founders are kind of the face but this lot of lot of folks behind those teams like most of the most of the people like uh the folks behind the team the 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 people that are developing on it uh, the oh, because it's open source the developers that are developing on it sometimes they get left behind i i would just like to yeah they are just best in their respective fields i would say because many of them are just supremely talented cryptologists mathematicians and many of them are software engineers and like they are just best in their fields and i would like to congrats mr selvio like having an uh, just making a community of such supremely talented people i would say yeah absolutely and uh maybe you can uh, go over like what the, who, who are actually the folks behind this because we have talked about Silvio the founder but who are all the all other folks because it's not a one man army it's it's a community driven effort so before you go into it i would just like to give a huge round of applause to anyone uh, who is in the algorithm ecosystem i appreciate you uh, to like involved in this ecosystem to develop to advance the ecosystem it means I don't know if you can guess feel that but it means a lot because like I've been involved in this ecosystem for like almost like 6 months I've been exploring because I'm exploring different chains and this like Elgort is like a new project that I'm exploring and so like whenever I have any questions or like any queries I just go there go on reddit ask folks and then it's pretty good community so huge congrats to all of the people behind it and uh, maybe now uh, maybe you can like give give the audience like who are the folks behind this project because it's like it's an open source project but sometimes the open source projects the people that are actually working on those sometimes get left behind so i would just like to give you an opportunity to explain the folks behind this project like who are they what are their responsibilities what they do and like how much of a brilliant minds they are yeah sanjit so first of all as you told and as you ex- uh, just explained i would also like to congratulate the entire team for just developing a fully decentralized secure and scalable blockchain which provides a common platform for building such a nice product and basically we are talking about the cryptocurrency itself and so yeah as we talk that the team is as important as the leader so it consists of some supremely talented people and as you told that i have read that there are some great cryptologists who are having some deep you know a deep insight inside them to just eagerness to learn new new things discover new ways each and every day to make things better for the people throughout the globe whether it be blockchain kind of stuff or whether it be particularly cryptocurrency kind of stuff and they are having some uh, wonderful people a wonderful team of developers and some great mathematicians and obviously i think they are their leader is a great mathematician and obviously having a such a great leader such a great math- uh, mathematician uh, uh, above them would just nurture their uh, you know skills as well absolutely and yeah i will put up like the the team page here so that everyone can see the faces behind that because it's like uh, we are talking so everyone can see the faces behind those project i will put up that but uh, also one thing like uh, i would like to mention like the team has developed is like i have worked on different chain i have worked on like i've started work, working with like ripple i have worked on ethereum i have worked on different chains as a developer as a developer not like buying crypto selling crypto as, as a developer so like i've interacted with the blockchain itself but most of the like the biggest problems to learn to like understand and to as a developer i feel like this lack of like the guidance like the documentation stuff in all of the majority of the blockchain but like algorand is i will put up the screen like they have made us such easy like easier to onboard as a developer like they have made it so much easier for me personally i felt it was very easy or like just put in some hours just go through like the some of the direction their quick quick tour of the the platform or the website they provide like how they do it's it's just one of those things like many people don't appreciate and i would just like to give a shout out like how it's 
it's really appreciated how you like made it easier for developers like me to onboard to work through the documentation through like the gamification of this stuff just like it's an amazing thing i would, I would like to uh, rec- like make a big big hands down uh, to like how they have structured structured like their developer ecosystem because at the end code is law like in blockchain we we, we say code is the only law we we have no biases we don't we have no political influence code is the only law and so you can say like engineers or the developers who are building that stuff they have huge responsibilities to like because we we are dealing kind of like monetary value with with the folks like you can understand that so i feel like to the the platform like the infrastructure which uh, any of the blockchain provide it's it should be much easier for a developer to understand to go through to understand the fundamentals how this blockchain works so like what what are the things like nitty gritty of stuff and i feel like algorand has done a brilliant awesome job in that department to make the onboarding of a developer as easy as smoothless as possible so a huge round uh, and i would recommend uh, if any of the folks listening who are like in the tech as a developer tech ecosystem just explore just go into like the blockchain space this huge need in the blockchain ecosystem because that's the future that is the only future that we can see we, the why i say this I, i might be biased because i feel like the leaders that we have right now they are not as trustworthy i'm biased that's my bias they might not be as trustworthy or they might they might fail so why not give it a chance why not have a substitute of those things that what i'm saying so have a look at like the developer ecosystem if you're a developer if you're not a developer you are like uh, not into like coding or like developing stuff have a look at the chain itself like their fundamentals because that's what drive the whole project it is go into the discord go into the reddit uh, have a chat with the folks out there it's it's just amazing community out there and just to give you the just the they just put it they just put out the numbers are like for easy to understand they have if you see the github contributions on the algorand blockchain it's it's much more it's much more than bitcoin so it's it's the developer ecosystem is growing out there so just want to mention out there uh, i think now uh, uh, we are running out of time we should like uh, move to the next thing so what what as a crypto newbie what do you want to ask so let's just put it that way devansh what do you want to ask about yeah, algorand no. I just I was just amazed to know one thing that I think uh, you can just explain that in a bit detail. That yesterday was I was going through the stuff and I just uh, read some blog and it was completely on uh, basically about the transaction fee. And there I read that low transaction fees also one of the key features that Algorand this chain is providing. And you know it's really hard to achieve this thing if we just uh, go from the team's perspective if i'm not wrong uh, absolutely isn't it yeah so, yeah. so you you mentioned a great point like i i would have forget this the whole conversation so guys uh, so uh, we have to remember like uh, we are living in india's a second world world country or third world i think it's second world world country right we folks like you and i we cannot afford to pay 10 dollars just to do a transaction we cannot afford that right it's way too much money and it brings like the network effect down so if you have to send me 5 dollars because that's like considering the currency transaction it's a kind kind of good amount of money to do a, like a 5 10 20 dollar transaction to do a 20 dollar transaction you would not want to like add 10 dollars just to do a transaction right it's it's like that you would not do that you would not use this platform right but uh, so that would have feel like so low transaction fee what what it means is like if you are doing a transaction even as small as a dollar it will cost you cents like cents over cents so that what that brings is like new people on the platform new people on the blockchain to use that blockchain because we have to consider not everyone is like eager or like not everyone has the money to pay 10 5 20 and sometimes it can go up to 300 dollars just to do the transaction not everyone has that kind of money so what that do is that brings down the people using the transaction like people using the blockchain itself so and one of the great features of algorand is low transaction fee and it's fast you don't have to wait 10 minutes like bitcoin 
you don't have to pay five sing dollars just to do the transaction you can do it fast easy and like much quicker as compared to like any of the other chains out there so uh, that that's a great point you mentioned out there so what low transaction fee means is to do a transaction you are paying much much like cents over the dollar you are paying like 0.001 rupees which is like it does not account when you are doing a transaction of 5 dollars right so just to give numbers in perspective so yeah that's what uh, it means yeah and i think uh, from founders perspective or whether it be teams or community and i think it's pretty much hard to achieve this thing that is this low transaction because we are not seeing uh this type of feature in any of the existing crypto stuff and uh, like uh making this possible is i think one of the key features that makes algorand an amazing yeah, absolutely thing. and just to bring out more like because we are talking about this and when i say like it will help to onboard more people so algorand recently has launched 10 million wallets so like that's a big number 10 million people are using algorand so and remember algorand is a new chain so like 10 million people are using algorand 10 million people are wallet so like just to bring a perspective like what low cost fee could do it could be amazing it could onboard more than 5x the potential if you have like cost fees uh, on a blockchain so th- that's what it could do it could onboard more people on a chain yeah and most importantly i think uh, if you are you folks are in the crypto related stuff and all recently elon musk tweeted a thing that this existing crypto stuff like uh, what you called as at bitcoin ethereum and other some related stuff is just producing harm to the environment and i being a new buy i was like how are they producing harm to the environment polluting the our environment polluting the ecosystem and and when i was just considering the point this with respect to algorand i came to know that they have just covered this point in the utmost importance they have covered, uh, covered this point with the first uh, i would say that they this is the first importance they have given to this point that they are just doing their best in order to make the chain a green chain that is eco friendly completely eco friendly and i think uh that's the thing which also makes algorand i would say i would say as per me this is the key feature because i would say as we called as our uh, mother earth so if we want to protect than the existing ones are causing polluting harm um, and just polluting our ecosystem then i would say ki this would be you know uh, just revolutionizing the stuff yeah so so that, that's a very very good point that you bring up so uh, so in in this like uh, crypto space there's been a debate going on these days like uh, which is like according to like the the environmental effects of running a blockchain like uh, any of the cryptocurrency that you have so like uh, to mine a cryptocurrency like because these are been mined right so what i uh, like i say when i when i say mine is like new cryptocurrencies enter into the circulation and there is a certain process to it and a certain process is called as the consensus uh, the consensus mechanism and there are uh, many consensus mechanism out there there is proof of work and proof of stake so what all of the major cryptocurrencies out there do is like they are work on proof of work so what this proof of work means actually is like your computer systems like what it we are always solving a problem set but right as i said earlier so what the proof of work means your computer systems gpu anything they are solving a mathematical problem and to solve that mathematical problem you have to provide energy to the computer system right so you are actually doing some kind of work which to a scale exactly the first thing that involves is itself the electrical energy the basic thing we need to charge our electronic devices firstly specifically the laptop so from there we are just providing the energy so, yeah, so thing this is the very initial thing i would say yeah so 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 absolutely so that has been to provide that and it it's been kind of like uh, you cannot mine uh, any of the normal laptop you need special equipment that and if you need special equipment it costs a lot of energy resources and right now we have only planet earth right now until we go to mars so we have to like try our best to like protect is as much as possible especially we are the generation z we are here to stay much longer as compared to another generation so we have to think it 
so that's why like this is one of the debate going on within the and environmental friendly things like it's much more like uh, the young generation could accept that like this is environmental friendly this is not environmental friendly so yeah so work understand this uh, proof of work provides like uh, the 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 according to like the research and stuff it kind of like uh, has an environmental effect to it to what extent it's debatable like many people say it's like uh, we use renewable but it's debatable but what does yeah but what algorithm does provide you like algorithm is a pure proof of state so you don't have to run so much of the the mining rigs the gpus you can just mine or like a uh, algorithm through just a normal computer so you can do that and what proof of stake al uh, like the the consistent mechanism do it's most of the time it's like it does not provide as much of environmental effect as uh, a proof of work so it's you can say 99% like 99% much more towards green so they are green to, like that's what they are called is green chain of an order of magnitude of 99% so that's a great point that you mentioned and of a order of 99% seriously so don't fact check me on that but uh, to what i read it's like it's that affordable so it's so if a proof of work so if a proof of work uh, just to like uh, if in a in a normal 24 hours period i'm assuming the numbers if it take about 100 units of electricity the proof of stake mechanism would take almost one don't fact check me but this are like rough estimations so what does what does that help is like it helps the environment and no one wants to harm the environment I, i would say so like at least no one should intentionally do though so that's why like the the team has like done a proper research for like we we have to protect the environment so like and i think that should be the basic basic importance that any technology should give to the environment that uh, you know it shouldn't harm the environment the existing uh creatures involved in the planet and i think that's the very basic feature uh, which should be there in any kind of blockchain stuff because it is pretty much necessary as we can see that there are other things which are polluting and if technology such a advanced technology we are just hoping to boom in the upcoming future would create a damage to the environment then it would be you know pretty much saddening to us and like, uh, that thing yeah i cannot agree more than that so uh, algorithm is one of the greenest blockchain out there they don't use much energy to run the network because uh, it's like you are running the network and to run the network it costs some energy uh, because algorithm is working or like the consistent mechanism is pure proof of stake so they use much less energy so that's one of the great point that you mentioned so yeah one thing sanjit can you please just elaborate proof of stake a bit because i know proof of work completely i understand this terminology that and it's being related to the evolution of energy and consumption of energy and just releasing the energy but what uh, is a basic uh, terminology related to proof of stake me being a beginner yeah so yeah so uh, so in proof of work you are actually using computer power and this to like mine bitcoin in the of it but yeah so what proof of stake here means like what just a general definition to understand so what because to mining bitcoin what does it do they are validating all the transactions they are helping to run the network so understand the fundamental you have to help to run the network so you are verifying the blocks you are verifying like the transaction at this with this right yes proof of work is doing it a different way proof of stake what does it do as say it stake because so what do you do so like just talk about algorithm so you have to stake x amount of algorithm onto the chain to be to just like to verify you are if you provide x amount of algorithm you are verified to verify the transactions if you don't have that stake so you your financial incentives are there to be honest as you said uh, if not many people are honest uh, in the network then the network is of no use it's a financial incentive to you because if you are you are staking algorithm and if that algorithm if the chain does not work then algorithm is of like no value right so you are staking your your own incentive your own incentive is with to run the network 
So you stake X amount of it. It's just like you fix deposit in a bank, you fix deposit in a network, but you have that power. So you have X amount of algorithm that bit, like that gives you the verification mark. Like now you can verify the transactions and you can verify the transaction on a normal laptop. You don't need like with a 1997 laptop, you can verify the transaction because all of the things are done with the help of like the network. Yeah, with, that's the absolutely internet. You don't great. Need you don't need physical things. And just, just to give like, uh, you, uh, you can fact check you that. You can run proof of stake, proof of stake. Like you can run proof of stake uh, consistency mechanism with a Raspberry Pi. You don't need even need a full computer, just with a Raspberry Pi. So yeah, so th I think that uh, I, I give a like a, uh, brief like what proof of stake means but uh, if any of the audience does not feel like this is the right like i still don't understand it you can comment down and we can like uh, i can try to provide you as much as information i can so one more thing i want, would just like to discuss as we are just going deep diving through this algorithm kind of stuff is that i was just going through an article which was explaining smart contracts and all which is related to algorithm so can we just elaborate a bit that to the audience? Okay, so okay, so it's it's uh, he, he used uh, you are uh, now it's going to be more technical terms. So if any of the words does not make sense to the audience, don't worry. So smart contract, it's like uh, most of the times, like I, I will relate to the banking system, right? You deposit your money to a bank, and then bank does all the things. When when we say bank does all the things, it's like People in the bank manage the money, right? So there are human resources that manages your money, right? In the blockchain space, as we said, code is law. Code is law. It is it, understand code is law. It is much more power than you think. So what smart contract does is, if you say if you pro, uh, if you like you develop the smart contract, right? You develop the smart contract. So it's like. Smart contract has its own brain, like the like the code that you wrote is has its own brain. So, what does bank do? If you provide X amount of bank, it deposits it. It gives you seven percent of whatever the percentage is, right? But to provide that, there are certain things that a bank has to do, right? They have to do money transfer this, 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 right? What smart contract does in 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 this financial thing is like if you provide the money to the smart contract. Smart contract does not need any human resources. It has already been written. So smart contract within itself provide you the whole thing. So you can say any code that is at own brain, like the code is the brain. So that's what smart contract is. I'm giving a big, 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 like the, the lowest version of expression that I got because it's like, if I go in the deep, it's much. Yeah. So basically we don't need any external influence. The code itself will perform all the functions which are needed. Yeah. 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 So the code itself can perform tasks. So yeah, that's what it is in the basic lay, 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 layman language. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think, uh, even a beginner, even a initial level person can understand this terminology pretty well. Yeah, so I can just say that uh, knowing all these things, all these pros of algorithm, like I have uh, invested earlier too, but I now today I've just made up my mind to invest even more in Algorand. What do you say, Sanchat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th th just before we talk about like all of the price, because uh, I like uh, I, I don't think uh, like a uh, price prediction are like a thing for me, like at least for me. So before we touch base on like the investing side of Algorand and this stuff, uh, I want to like be because we discussed about the smart contracts thing, right? So I, I want, because I earlier said like Apple store and algorithm. Now uh, I want to just touch base upon the application that are already built on algorithm, right? So one of the biggest application that has been built on top of algorithm uh, is CBDCs. CBDCs of a country itself. So imagine Indian rupee. Yeah, you just came through a very great point. I would say, yeah, continue. So yeah, Indian rupee built on a blockchain. So you don't need, so like most of the time what happens is bank server is down. You can't transfer your own hard earned money, right? You like that, does that make sense to you? Like it does, it does not make sense to me. Like that's my money. I cannot take out, like, like I, I don't have access to the money, right? Sometimes the bank server go down. So imagine Indian rupee on a blockchain, but, but. To have an Indian money on a blockchain, like to have any currency on a blockchain, it need to be fast. 
it need to be reliable it, it needs to have the infrastructure right because like if, if it takes 10 minutes to like just to verify like if i send you money right now 10 minutes after you will receive it that's what makes sense right it has to be cheap it has to be like if i'm transferring my money if i'm transferring 1000 rupees it should not cost me 500 rupees so i should not pay 1500 to transfer 1000 rupees right so this need to be infrastructure to build a cbdc so what cbdc is, is central bank digital currency so whatever like bank currencies the country have just out of a blockchain so algorand is the only blockchain out there that has the infrastructure that the cbdc is running on it and just to give you a perspective how big of a cbdc to run a cbdc on a blockchain is a big deal is like usa is still figuring out what cbdc and thing are south korea is having a competition like it's a bounty between three companies like which three company have the proper infrastructure and their plan does not roll out until 2023 china they're still testing if the cbdc is viable or not vietnam is figuring out like what does cbdc help japan is figuring out what cbdc could do latin america is figuring out europe is trying to have the euro on a blockchain and UAE, the UAE, one of the like the biggest, like they they have enough money, right? They can throw X amount of money. They don't care. They will not have a, they will not have a test version of a CBDC until 2023. So so, but but Algorand is already running a CBDC of Marshall Island. Then be like Marshall Island. They are running a CBDC of Marshall Island. I'm just gonna uh. Uh, bring up the PR, like the, the press release of the Marshall Island CBDC so that people can read. Uh, I will put up uh, up on the screen now uh, so that you can read. So Algorand has the infrastructure. They have all of the things that what CBDC need. This is one of the biggest applications. No other chain has that. No other chain has that infrastructure. Many countries are still trying to figure out which chain to use, which infrastructure to use. They are still, they are putting billions, billions, billions of dollars. Just not billions of dollars. Billions of man manpower into it, and Algorand has that already. So that's just like it just opens my mind. Like Algorand has that infrastructure of like a biggest like they're running actual countries' currency on a blockchain. So it's a big deal. People have to understand that. So like that's what I I have to like uh, I would like to point out to the audience. Like it's a big deal. Like they have one of the best infrastructure of a blockchain out there. If they're saying they, they solved the blockchain trilemma. They solved one of the biggest, hardest problem in the blockchain space. So just the credit out there, just to put, put out the word. Completely agree, man. That is just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So concluding it, I think I would like to know, as I said, I am a beginner in investing and specifically, I would like to just go and invest more and more in algorithm. So I would just like to know even as I think you are hesitating, I would just like to know the price potential of Algorand. What can we see in the upcoming time and all? Yeah. So yeah, so like uh, I don't give usually price prediction because uh, first of all, like uh, investing in cryptocurrency is not everyone's deal. If you can stomach the 50% downs, that, that's okay. But uh, I don't give price prediction, but understand this, like we, uh, what, what like what does fundamentally facebook is like facebook is democratizing meeting friends right what is spotify is spotify is giving digital access to all of the music right and these are billions trillion dollars company right exactly what does a blockchain do blockchain is providing banking digital banking to all of the folks out there all of the folks india is a second world war second the developing country how many folks in India, they are unbanked, right? Because they cannot find the Pussy and it's very hard for them. But they still have the smartphone, right? With the help of smartphone, they can have access to the banking system. That's what that's what I say. So if those companies, they're solving... Digital banking, which uh, we generally refer in normal terms, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So if those companies that are like democratizing information like Google, they can be a trillion dollar company. If like... Uh, uh, the Spotify, who is just giving access to the music. Imagine if everyone in the world has a like uh, has access to the monetary system. Like, how many times have we seen like the rich have the like the resources, the money resources? Like, 
they can borrow it at one percent rate, right? Exactly. Exactly. Imagine if we can also do that. Imagine if we can do that with the help of blockchain, we provide that. And just to give a rough estimate so that people can understand, blockchain and crypto, it's like it's a repeat of two thousand two, like uh, when the internet was developed. And just to give a numbers, there are only right now, as of March twenty twenty one, there were hundred million wallets, hundred million crypto wallets out there, total oh. crypto wallets out there, like. There are hundred million wallets out there that have crypto or like some sort of it. And do you know when hundred million users was on the internet? They were nineteen ninety seven. So you have pretty 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 early, pretty early. Imagine this. And a last thing I would like to say because we are just like on an hour mark. Yeah. Uh, cryptocurrencies. If you have the like, I, I don't see them as an investment. I see them as a social experiment. Everyone is trying to solve a problem. It's a social experiment. Can we achieve this? Can everyone has those resources which the rich usually have? Can we have this? And with this, which like which of the projects that I like, I just put some money in there. That's what I, I would say. You can do some mathematics on your own, whichever you. I don't like to give price prediction what it could be. Just find those projects which you believe have the best thing, best best what the problem statement they're trying to solve. So what's the problem statement they're trying to solve? The team out there and how much the community they have. I, I would like just like to uh, end to this. Uh, anything you would like to conclude the things with? No, like I'm just I have discussed each and every th- uh, things and stuff and like it was great and fun interactive uh, fun interaction with everyone. If you want to, yeah, just elaborate anything. Let me know. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, 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 I would like to thank the audience if you have if you are listening to this part you have de- dedicated one hour of your like precious time and I-, I hope you take something out of this conversation like even a little bit it will like it will mean a lot and if you have any questions you can yeah yeah definitely and I think it will be quite a fruitful for us as well as for everyone in the audience and yeah it was fun and great interacting with you guys yeah cheers, cheers everyone yeah.